Everybody can see my screen, I hope. I'm bringing up SolidWorks 2019. Today's Lunch and Learn is going to be on SolidWorks performance and stability, or at least trying to get a little bit more stability and better performance out of SolidWorks. I'm presenting this in 2019. Uh, 2019 does seem to be a little bit more stable than 2018. Um, also, when you are working in 2019, one nice thing that I like about it is that when it's working on something, it does let you know about it. And that's going to show up down here. You see that 2019 shows this little hourglass. It lets me know it's working on something. Um, a lot of times the problem with SolidWorks is when it has a slowdown or a hang up is you hitting your mouse a bunch of times or your escape key hitting a bunch of times feels like you're doing something but you're probably helping it crash so it's better to just shout at the screen or hit the table if you do need the violent part of it but certainly adding information to it when it's thinking about something is not helping also it has to show you um, a little sign that says hey I'm working on this would you like to wait if you don't touch anything you know it usually will take care of itself more often than not so I'm opening up this file in 2019 there's three major ways that SOLIDWORKS can have performance or stability problems. Um, the first is on open or save, and that's when SOLIDWORKS is um, accessing your operating system or accessing the vault. So it's gone outside of SOLIDWORKS, it's starting to work with trying to save the files. If you have problems opening or saving, I'm going to show you um, some of the stuff for making files open a little faster. The next thing is visually. Um, you can ha start to have slowdowns. This is not that large of an assembly, um, about 350 components, but it's starting to get to the size where I'm noticing performance hits. When I try to rotate this, I hold in my middle mouse button and I move it, it is in fact rotating, but it's not smooth at all. It's very choppy. It's not just the GVC doing it to you. Uh, my screen is um, actually showing that choppiness. If I were to open up this part, and do the same thing. Hold my middle mouse button, you'll see that spins around. That's how fast my assembly should be doing it. The problem is that SOLIDWORKS cannot draw the assembly that quickly because it's got too much um, information that it needs to show me on the screen and that's why it's getting that choppy visual. Um, sometimes when you're panning, zooming, or especially when you're doing sectioning or switching between windows um, and you've got an assembly like that, you can have really uh, long hang-up times or crashes coming from that. So I'm going to go through the visual stuff. And the last thing that usually people feel pain in is the processor speed. And that's SOLIDWORKS actually doing calculations. So if I were to look at the, um, you know, go hit my control Q. What control Q does is that force is a rebuild. You can see it's got to build 52, um, it's got to do 52 operations. One of the operations is taking a lot longer than the others. Typically really complex fillets or surfaces or things like that. When you do rebuild, those hard features will take a long time. And so when you'll find that when you're editing a part that's really complex and you're spending a lot of time watching the rebuild, I can show you some ways to alleviate that issue as well. But let's get back to the visuals on this. So the big word for today is tessellation. And what that means is just a fancy word for a lot of triangles. SOLIDWORKS does not see parts like we see them on the screen. Uh, in its little computer mind's eye, it's a little different. Let me see if I can bring up an example here. Suppress this for a second. Just have a couple prismatic shapes. I've got a four-sided pyramid and a little um, rectangular prism. And what SOLIDWORKS has done for me is it's shaded it and it's put uh, shadows on it with the lighting to make my brain think that this is a 3D shape. But it is not at all a 3D shape. It's a picture on a 2D screen. How SOLIDWORKS sees the geometry, if I go to File, Save As, I can show you a really good visual on this. If I save it as a STEP file, I'm sorry, a STL file, and this is the type of file that uh, you'll save when you're doing 3D printing. And that basically breaks down 
the file into, you can see the tessellation that happens here. So for a cube or a rectangle, it's pretty easy. It's 12 sides. Um, if that was a tetrahedron up there, it would only be 16 sides. But since it has the square base, it's given me 18, si 18 faces. And so that's the amount of triangles. Pretty simple. Um, so this type of file is not going to give me any issues. Let me go into my features here. I'm going to add a fillet and just quickly do a full round fillet here. And then I'll do another one. Again, nothing too crazy, just simple geometry. So now if I do that same trick where I say file, save as, switch it over to a STL, take a look at my results here. I've gone from having 18 triangles to having 3,000 triangles. Um, so the amount of detail that you put in your parts is going to add up, um, especially really organic parts and things like that. And that's why I turned off this sphere if I were to unsuppress this and do a save as, you know, I had 3,000 before. Just adding that sphere just added another 5,000. So you can see that organic shapes really bump up this tessellation, and that's like a mesh of what the part is. So SOLIDWORKS, when you're revolving stuff, it's moving this whole mesh around and then it coats it with a coloring of your choice and it puts in shadows. But the fact that it's got to move all those triangles at once, um, the more triangles you put in, the harder it gets. Modern graphic cards can do, um, you know, tens of millions, if not a hundred million triangles in a second, um, which you think, wow, I would never hit the top of that. But you'll see it's not too hard to, to get up to that level of triangles just by putting fillets and things like that. So sometimes if you have a, a simplified version of your parts where the fillets are suppressed and things like that, right away you're going to see some improvement on your performance. Let me go into my options here for a second and talk about what we're looking at here. So when I was doing the export as an STL, um, I've got it set pretty high because I actually send my STLs out to get 3D printed and I want my circular holes to look circular and um, not down like this. I can actually get them down to a hexagon um, depending on the amount of, you know, each, a, each triangle leg is how many degrees of the circle. So when I had it set to five degrees, I was getting 72 facets per circle, which is pretty good, but you can bump that down if you want the STL not to be as large, but you start to degrade the visual ability of it. Also, the STL thing was really just an example. If I go to my document properties, every document you have has an image quality. This is what's taking its toll on your graphics. So this is the same sort of slider. You see I've got mine set to high. That's really bad. That's gonna give me um, geometry where if I turn it down there, it still looks like a circle. Still looks like a circle here. You know, it's not until you get all the way down to the bottom where you start looking like a polygon. But if I had it here, visually, things would look like a circle. I don't need to have everything bumped up. And this is a huge one because a lot of times people will have their template set to have a really sh uh, high detail. And that means every part in your assembly has a really high level of detail, which means every part in your assembly has tons of triangles, which is what is slowing down the machine when it's trying to draw the pictures graphically. Okay, uh, one more thing before I get out of here. Here's that word, tessellation. Save tessellation with part document. That's checked on. You want to leave that checked on, but I want to explain what it does. What it does is when you save a SOLIDWORKS part, there's a lot of stuff to it. There's a header that tells you what computer it was on, who made it, what the date was. And then there's a lot of parametric information as far as planes, sketches, lines, those sorts of things. It can also save a tessellated mesh of your part. And you want to have that checked on if you ever want to open this thing up 
with uh, SOLIDWORKS Viewer or eDrawings or inside of your EPDM Viewer, uh, that's where that's getting that tessellated data. It's actually inside the part. Also, when you save out a part as an e-drawing, you have the ability to save that e-drawing as a STL if you want them to. Um, that, again, is also using this tessellated data for the STL when you shoot out an e-drawing like that. Uh, hopefully that explains that concept. If anybody has any questions, let me quick check my chat. Uh, no, looks like no chat here. So yeah, if you do have any questions at any time, I know I go fast through this stuff, but just let me know and I'm happy to explain it if I've gone over something too quickly. Okay, hopefully you guys get the idea on the triangles. And now I'm going to go back into my assembly and talk about how that even matters to you. Okay, it's the fact that SOLIDWORKS has to draw tr all these triangles. And you would think that, okay, if it's rounded shapes, probably this uh, shell, these tires, the fancy rims, all that stuff has a lot of organic shapes in it, um, especially since there's even tire tread in here. But I don't really know for sure if that's the problem. SOLIDWORKS gave us this tool years ago called Assembly Visual Visualization which is nice because you can do things like you can rank the parts uh, by how heavy they are, or how big they are. It takes a second for it to evaluate the whole thing. But once it does, it's come up. Right now it's looking at mass. So I can sort this thing by heaviest to lightest. I can play around with um, you know, what colors are. The blue ones are the heaviest. The red ones are the lightest. So that's that tool. You can have it read not only mass, but like I said, the size or the area, the total weight, all sorts of things. If you go to more, you can actually have it sort by any custom property that you put in your files. But what I'm after is this one on the bottom that they just added a couple years ago called performance analysis. And this was for exactly what I'm talking about today, is what is causing my assembly to slow down? And so when I set up to do the visualization by that, it shows me by total graphic triangles, by open time, or by rebuild time. So the, the three things that I've got that I was talking about before. The operating system, the processor, and the graphics card. These are the three prongs that I can hit. So I want to take a look at what is up with this tessellation. Why is this getting so choppy when I'm trying to spin, spin it around? Well, my top four pieces here, this one's got a million and a half triangles, and there's four of them. So remember when I said, you know, 100 million sounds like a lot of triangles? You can start eating it up pretty quickly if you have a lot of files like this in there. Or this one's a half a million, but I have 24 of them, so with this. Half a million at 40. This one is the guy. I figured he'd be there. But you notice that these pieces, they're not even in the top 10. They're way down at the bottom. Just because you have an organic shape doesn't mean you're the winner of the triangle uh, competition. Let's take a look at who is the winner of this. You can just right-click from this and suppress, hide, show, open, do what you would usually do from a right-click on your feature manager tree out of the visualization, and here comes this component. So this is a vendor part that I'm going to get in a box, and we're not going to be making these, but the vendor sent me the whole kit and caboodle. I have every screw and you know o-ring and spring and all sorts of stuff that I have in here which is great but I don't need it at this level. Um, it's up to you whether you want to make a simplified configuration or just chop up the one that you're working on now. Um, if I was making this I would make a simplified configuration so that I had a detailed configuration for my own drawing purposes and then a simplified version for the assembly. But the problem I've got here is this thing has 62 different bodies, and that's where all those triangles are coming from. They're coming from this helix and this. It's just a ton of stuff in here, and I don't need all this information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter the solid bodies and hold my control key down. And I'll just start picking the stuff um, on the outside that I would like to see 
um, as far as what the extents of this part is. So that looks pretty good. So I've got like five or six of them selected. Um, I can just right click and say delete keep. I want to make sure that I have it set to keep. And so whatever the 10 bodies or 12 bodies that I picked are there. 13, I guess, is the number that I Lucky 13. Um, but the other 50 components that were in there are no longer in there. And so if I go back into my assembly, um, the, the visualization is kind of nice because it does do real-time stuff. Um, it's no longer number one. In fact, um, when I did search for it, it was way down here at, um, I think it's number five or six now. Okay, but you can see that those, um, actually it's at number four, I could go and continue taking bodies out of there. The more detail I have in there, the more it's going to take, but, you know, I've knocked it out of first place, and instead of four times a million and a half, now it's four times half a million. So you start cutting that down, like I said, the glass man, I really don't need that. Maybe I'll have a, a configuration where I can see the guy, but right now I... I I've got him sitting in there comfortably. I know he fits into the extent, so I don't actually need to see him the whole time I'm working on the assembly. So I'll just turn that one off. Okay. Then we come to these two, which are about a half a million triangles each. And let's see what kind of fantastic part this is. It is a piece of hardware. Why do the hardware have so much triangles? Well, so our friends at McMaster Car, I can tell if I go into uh, this configuration, that configuration name, McMaster Car always puts its part numbers in the configuration name. So let me go into McMaster. And there's my part. Hey, it knows a lot more about it than I do. Now, here's the material and all the different specs on it. And this is where they got this file. I'm going to save this one and just open it up fresh here to show you this is what you get from McMaster Car. This is way too much information. Um, it's kind of like ants in the kitchen. Whenever I see a part like this in somebody's vault, I automatically just go and turn the spiral off. Typically, uh, when it's mated in, it's going to be mated in um, by the axis, not by the helix. So, for goodness sake, please turn those off. The other thing that McMaster Car is really, really sloppy about is the sketches. Now, at the assembly level, usually our assemblies are set to hide sketches, um, but it's just kind of lazy here, the way that they've got it set up, and I wanted to show you a trick. I want to see all the sketches in this part. If you right-click, go to Tree Display, say, show me the flat tree, it shows you all of the pieces. The, the sketches are no longer embedded underneath of their um, features, so I can actually see them all at the top level, and I can see the ones that are dark, and not only do they love putting helixes and everything, they also love just showing all their sketches and planes. So that's what you should do before you save this McMaster car part. Also, before you put it into your assembly, it's probably a good idea to check your PLM system or your PDM system uh, for anything with this McMaster car spec, because you probably already have this uh, part in there. If I hit save and close, oh, that's not going to do anything to the assembly because that one wasn't in the assembly. This is the one that's in the assembly. Let me just suppress that helix. Close that out of here. 
So, okay. That one saved it. And it was so many triangles for such a tiny little part. And just like this part. You might think, okay, well, if the helix is on the inside of the nut, what does it even matter? Because there's a screw inside the nut and the threads are hidden from view. So I only have to worry about it in hidden view or, or wireframe, right? But that is not the case at all. Um, I will explain in a second here. Let me just finish doing the stuff I like to do. That is what you should do with all your hardware. If you get it from McMaster Car, they love putting in detail, but we don't actually cut the threads, um, or neither do any of our vendors. So why do we need the threads in those parts? Just suppress them, and um, you'll still have the same part. You'll still have the axis and the head clearance, all that sort of stuff. should all work for you. Okay. So, um, I'm back down. looks like the rest of my stuff is still more... Um, hardware that I have to go in and, and turn the helixes off of. But this thing's already starting to spin faster just by taking out the four, top four um, culprits inside of this graphics slowdown. So that's a good idea. If you've got an assembly that's slowing down, go to the visualization. Again, it's up here in your evaluate tools. It'll open up this tab here and you can set what you want to visualize performance analysis. If you go through and get rid of your top 10 offenders in the graphics, chances are you're going to have much better performance here when you start spinning this thing around. Okay, so hopefully that clears up a little about the graphics. I'm going to get back more into it in a second here, but I did want to talk about the operating system and the memory. So when you do open up a assembly resolved like I've got here, I've only got a couple of windows open. That's what these ones with the yellow mark here is. Everything else it has clear are files that are loaded into my RAM but do not have their own window. So when we're talking about slowdowns, you have to imagine running with a full bucket is pretty difficult, right? Running with a half a bucket is a whole lot easier. So if you've got a giant assembly and you open it up resolved, all of your RAM starts to fill up with the components that are in that assembly and it really starts to bog down your comp computer performance in general. Uh, so there's different ways that you can open up an assembly and I'm going to get into those right now. So you see that when I close out of this assembly, the things that are open in SOLIDWORKS is gonna go from, you know, 50 things to two things. I don't even need these two things open, really. Okay, when I hit R, it shows me all my recent files. Um, when you're looking at your recent file, you can click down here. It's automatically set to resolved or whatever you've got at your setting. I'm going to open this one up in large assembly mode and open it up. So large assembly mode has several things that it does. One thing that it does is it opens files in a state called lightweight. And what lightweight is, is it's only opening up that tessellated data. Remember I showed you the check mark that says save the, the tessellated data? That's all it's bringing in. So it's pretty much bringing in an e-drawing of all your parts. It's not actually bringing in all the, all the, the component, all the uh, parametrics, all the sketches, all the features. That sort of stuff is not coming along for the ride. It's just loading up the graphics. You can see that this one has a whole lot of components. Even though I've got it set to this large assembly mode, it's still not an instant uh, type of thing. Uh, it's looking for toolbox parts in one of my assemblies, so I just have to answer that question. Stop asking me. Okay, so what's happening is it's just bringing up the graphics of the components. It still takes a while for it to do. You see that last time I opened it up, it took a minute 23. It's kind of nice, this little um, thing that they've got in 2019 that uh, gives me a little bit of an idea of how long this is going to take. And when, I, when it is finished, 
and I go over to the open in SolidWorks. This one's taking a little longer than last time. Okay, now it's finally coming up. So you see the large assembly mode still isn't a panacea. I still have to wait a bit for things to load up into RAM when I'm using this style, but it is actually a lot faster, um, usually twice as fast, up to 10 times as fast than opening up something resolved where it's actually loading up um, every single component and every piece of parametric geometry. All right, so this thing just wanted to make sure that I showed everybody the pain of opening up a large assembly in real time. Here we go. I start to get an idea uh, when things are going, when, when the feature manager tree starts to light up. Also down here, um, you can usually see the files that it's loading while it's loading files, but a lot of that, um, it had the files loaded, it just had to redraw the graphics for me which took some time. Okay, so you saw that this thing was opening up 1,500 parts into this assembly, but when we look over at my open in SOLIDWORKS, it is, no long, it is nowhere near 1,500 components. Uh, the only thing that it opened, you see that these all have uh, little assembly symbols, most of them. Some of them don't, but most of them do. So if an assembly is able to move, if it needs another assembly for its location, uh, if it's got external references, those assemblies need to load up even if you're in lightweight mode. So these things were loaded lightweight. You can tell something is loaded lightweight in the feature manager tree. It has this little blue feather next to it. If you ever see a little red feather, that just means that you're not looking at the latest version of it. But anytime you see a feather next to it, the thing is loaded lightweight. And the idea is to get this thing loaded quickly. And if I do need to work on the part, like this one, if I double click it in the graphics area, or if I double click it in the feature manager tree, or right click it and set to resolved, either one, that component was just loaded into RAM. So which one is this? 1305, so here it is. It just got opened up into RAM. I can also edit the part now, too, if I want to. So when you're in this large design review, everything's lightweight. Um, you can resolve it if you want to, or you can set it back to, to lightweight. Um, you know, there's right clicks that allow you to load and unload the files. So not only did I want to talk about um, large design review, but I really wanted to talk about something called 3D clipping and getting back to the, that bolt that had the threads inside it and why do those matter when I can't see them. So I'm going to go just into uh, a front view. Here we go. Side view. Okay, at, at this point, I can see all of the car. I can see the little workshop. I can see my toy parked outside. If I were to look this way, all of a sudden, I don't see the whole car. I don't see all the workshop. I can see parts of it through the windows. This is where the, the idea of Z clipping comes in. So it's in, in this instance, it is actually along the Z axis of my uh, assembly. But that's not where the term came from. The Z clipping, the Z plane is your screen. And then everything beyond your screen, you know, as it goes further, can you see this? Is there anything blocking this? As it goes further and further down that Z axis, it figures out what it has to show you and what it has to hide. Like here, it's hiding pretty much everything. I can see the tops of the plane and the front of the car, but most everything is blocked by the building at this point. Okay, SOLIDWORKS still sees everything sort of in its computer's mind's eye. I'm going to set this thing to wireframe, um, sort of give us, give us a visualization of 
exactly how much geometry is actually sitting in any particular view. There's tons of it. So when you look at that view, you think, well, it's pretty simple because all I had to draw was that brick wall. No, it had to figure out everything that's on the other side of that brick wall and what it's going to show you and what it's not going to show you. So the first level of it is it needs to figure out what is blocked by the other pieces. So if I go into Hidden Line Visible, you'll see all that gray stuff in the middle. It had to not show me that. And in, in this example, you know, it's an analogy. It's not actually what the computer is seeing because this has already been cleaned up a lot for us. What the computer sees is actually all of that tessellation. And then it figures out which triangles get shown and which ones don't. And then it puts a skin on the triangles and shades them if you do go into Shaded Mode. Okay, if I uh, go into the assembly here, I've got this large assembly mode on. That's a toggle. I can click that button. It's also on your tools pull down. You can go to tools, large assembly mode. Um, but what the toggle does for me is it automatically hides everything. So all planes, sketches, axes, all that stuff gets turned off. Um, so you see when I turn it off, I've got all these planes. I've got all this extra geometry in here. The large assembly mode... When you, when you have it turned on, all it's doing is it's changing it to shaded mode without edges and turning off all the visual stuff just to make it a little easier graphically for SolidWorks to draw. It also, when you choose to open up this large assembly mode, everything gets loaded lightweight. And like I said, that that's a toggle you can do. Um, if I right click, I can set everything to resolved or I can set everything to lightweight. If I set everything to resolved, uh, that's going to be the end of this presentation, so I'm not doing that. Let me close out of here. So that's large assembly mode. Everything gets loaded up lightweight. It's got that large assembly mode turned on automatically. There is actually a, a flip uh, a switch that you can flip for that under assemblies. So whether or not you're going to use uh, large assembly mode or this next one that I'm going to cover large design review is up to you. You have to check them on to use them at all. And then you can also set up this trip wire where if it's over 250 components, I want it in large assembly mode. If it's over, uh, let's say 750 components, I want it in large design review. Oop. I hit OK, but I, I wasn't finished with that page. Let me show you one more thing. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about was in this assemblies. Uh, so when I press that large assembly mode, what happens? You know, I can choose how evasive it is, how much stuff gets turned off from me going into that mode. And it's always stuff that's just going to make it your computer run faster. All right, I'm going to do another R to open up my regular stuff. And I'm going to open up another one called Large Design Review. Now, you remember when I opened this thing up the first time, it took about a minute and a half to open up. Here, it's open. It's done before I even got finished trying to explain it. Also, look how smooth it revolves. And that would have, that would have been the case whether or not I fixed up all those triangles either. What's going on with this large design review? So it's a way to get a bird's eye view of a large design without clogging up your RAM. You'll see that my open in SOLIDWORKS has one file open right now, even though that there's you know hundreds inside of this assembly. Also, there isn't a single component loaded when I was in lightweight mode, I could at least click in here. I could see the top plane, the front plane, the right plane. I could still mate parts into position and things like that. I just didn't see the features. Here, I don't see anything. I don't know how these are mated in or what planes they have. All I'm seeing is graphically the components. It's kind of nice. You can take measurements. Um, you can hide, show things. You can do section views. Um, all very quickly because it's basically like you're in an e-drawing where you're not going to have all the performance issues that you have when you're dealing with a large resolved assembly. 
The idea behind this is the fact that when you're working on something this large, I'm never really opening up the entire assembly to work on something. If I want to work on, let's say, the transmission from this interface, the large design review, I can open up that assembly. And here it comes. It's opening up that assembly. And I can start making changes to that assembly um, itself. So here it is. Let's say I wanted to suppress that component. Okay, there it is. Hit save. Now I've made that change to this subassembly. Whenever you have the top level assembly open in large design review, it's going to ask you this. You can tell it to not show it again, it'll keep your answer. But the, the question is, as you're making changes, do you want that e drawing? Uh, assembly that you've got in large design review to update or not? I say yes. I do want to see my changes at the top level. So then when I go back into the top level assembly, there it is. That component's been suppressed, but I didn't have to load this assembly to do it. So I can go in, I can work on the motor, I can work on the suspension, I can work on the things at different times and come back to this assembly without having to load it full weight and just have all that, uh, you know, top heavy design in there with all the components solved. Okay. Getting towards the end of this thing, do you guys have any questions on large design review or large assembly mode? What the difference is between those two? In 2019, they did give us the ability to uh, insert components and make components. You see how mine is grayed out here? Uh, the big bu bugaboo is that you have any components like this one that are set to flexible and able to move. It will not allow you to insert components and mate them. But if everything is um, solved, then you can insert components and mate them while you're still in large design review, not having to go into... Um, Resolved, which isn't that tough. I can set everything to resolved or lightweight just with a pull down right here. But again, typically what I do is I'll just have the top level open kind of as a reference point, and then I can use the feature manager tree to open components, even a hidden component like this one. So here we go. Here's a component that is got a lot of features going to for it. When I hit the control Q, you can see that it has to build 126 component or 126 features for me. Most of them rip right through. Uh, some of them like thicken or especially things that have to do with like surface knitting or trimming. Uh, those can take a while. The, uh, the amount of time it took for you to create that feature, it's going to keep taking that amount of time when you do a rebuild. Uh, typically only rebuilds happen when you're making changes. So it's only going to affect people that are trying to work on the file. But if I'm one of those people, I want to know a little bit more about this. I'm going to go to my evaluate. There's a performance evaluation tab on the evaluate tab. And for a component, what it'll show you is it'll show you how long it takes. So this thing takes 13 seconds to rebuild, that's that's judging it by your processor. It takes a look at your processor speed and tries to figure out how long it's going to take to build this thing. And you'll see that most of it's all coming from one single feature. Like I said, these surfacing features can sometimes just kill you as far as how long they take. So most of these things are a fraction of a second. The ones that get up into a half a minute or longer, that's going to be problematic. As I'm making changes, I have to sit there and wait for a half a minute for that thing to rebuild to see if my component is, you know, going to extrude up to that face or whatever I, whatever changes I was doing. So, back into my options. One more quick one. It's on the very first page. It's this one called Enable Freeze Bar. Pretty sure it's on by default. Um, 
maybe I just turn it on every time I load SolidWorks, so it just seems like it. But what it does is it gives you this little yellow bar here in your Feature Manager tree. There's a similar bar down here, the, the rollback bar, that makes it so that you, know, you can step through exactly how features happen to roll back in time and put something in at a time that you wanted to. This thing has the same sort of control. I click and pull it, but what this does is this locks out the design. Because I have more than one configuration, it asks, do you want to put the bar down on all of them? Um, yeah, sure. And you'll see that that puts these little locks on there. It's not really that secure of a system. If I wanted to unlock something, I just roll it back. But it does do something really nice. So when I went on here and said performance evaluation, this thing, the part, the rebuild time on this thing is pretty long. So it was 13 seconds. If I click on here and get a performance evaluation, it has reevaluated what's going to happen. So the rebuild time has gone from over 10 seconds to under 2 seconds. Again, this is this part I'm, I'm capturing it right when the problem's about to start, but you know that on a very, very complex part, you can have a lot of time where you're just watching that thing rebuild, wondering what the heck's going on. You can't touch it because you don't want to make it crash. Well, if you slide this bar down, it doesn't do that rebuild. So if I hit my Control Q, Remember, it used to say 170-something features. Now it's got 17 features to rebuild. So it's quick. I roll it to, okay, we're not changing beyond this point, and then I can work on everything underneath this. If I do try to work on something um, that's in there, you know, if I click on any feature and try to edit it, it'll tell me that it's locked. So you do need to unlock it before you're able to edit that feature. But it is a great time saver on complex parts. You want to roll that down. OK. Any questions on that, on the, on the freeze bar? I know a lot of people might not know that it's even there. If you send a, a file to somebody who does not have that activated, it'll just look like it's locked for them, and they won't be able to unlock it until they enable the freeze bar. Um, is my understanding on what, what happens when you send this file to someone else. Okay, one last thing here, decals. Uh, these are another big thing that people can, can end up slowing down. So the hardware with the helixes, please get rid of those. Those are the number one thing. I guarantee if anybody's here is using the McMaster hardware, which we all do because it's already built for us, uh, that's great, but they built it too well. You have to turn off those helixes or your assemblies are all going to slow down. The other thing is people will take a decal and they will trace the sketch and then extrude it really thin so that they can start adding colors to it. It's nice because it's easy to add colors to a body or to a face that's been extruded, but you typically don't want to extrude text. Extruding text gives you tons of triangles. Even if it's just one millimeter or 0.1 millimeter up, that's still a rim of triangles that you're going to have to put in there. And if you've got tons of decals everywhere, those can add up. So don't ever extrude text. The only time you want to extrude text is if the text is actually um, embossed or engraved onto a component. But if it's something like a decal, the best way to do it is with a decal. So the same place that I add colors, there's this little thing that looks like a tuna can with a picture on the side of it. That's a decal. I say, OK, let's add a decal. I pick the face I want to put it on. I browse for the file. There we go. Okay, you can also play around with um, 
masking if you need to. Like if, if that white area was supposed to be clear, um, I can go in here and tell it, you know, anything that matches that color, I want you to remove. Um, so there's, and you can also do like a, a negative of it if you want to, to mask it. But this one, I, I want the clear one. You'll see that if I go to mapping, right now it's set to projection, which basically means it's taking it from a plane and, and it's like you're projecting it out of a little projector. That's not what's going on here. This is actually a label. When I choose labels, I can use these on-screen controls to get this thing Come on, another half. There we go. So if you click on the ring, you can rotate. If you click in the middle, you can move it. If you click on the edges in the corner, you can resize it. If you've actually got a real size of it, like the thing's supposed to be a foot or something like that, you can type in a hard number here as well. And it's automatically set to fixed aspect ratio. Um, you can change that if you want to warp it, but by default it tries to keep it the same aspect. Um, also, when you um, use a decal, you have the choice of whether you want it to be an underlying, use the underlying appearance, like it's a clear decal, and you can see the metal underneath it. Um, or if you don't, it's going to treat it like it's, you know, the colors of your JPEG or your PNG, whatever you use to, to develop that. So that's the best way to put a decal on. Um, with these, I've also done something that's better than extruding it. If you do have a sketch of text, you can do a split line, which still gives you more triangles because these faces will get broken up into triangles, but it doesn't have that third dimension where I'm going to get a whole rim of triangles that's really going to knock the number up there. So that's the two best ways. Use a decal, or if you want to use a split line, you can do that if it's a paint job or something like that, not really a decal. Um, the thing you don't want to do is don't do surfaces, don't extrude uh, features. That just gives you more triangles for SOLIDWORKS to work with and ends up giving it a hodgepodge of stuff that slows down your graphics. So, all right. That is my presentation for the day. Hopefully, if you take some of these to heart, especially the uh, the assembly evaluation, the assembly visualization, I should say, go to the performance. If you take care of the top 10 offenders on that triangle list, you will see your assembly get faster, I'm pretty sure, unless your offender list is really long. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will be posting it soon. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me check my chat. Cool. All right, everybody, I will be posting this and I'll be having another one come up in a while. Have a great afternoon.